Let's talk about feedback. I know, that scary F word. Recently, I asked my team to do an anonymous survey of my leadership and growth here at Rise Up For You as the CEO and the founder. I was scared, I was nervous, I was worried about the results and hoping that I wouldn't get scores that were too bad or that made me feel like I wasn't enough as a leader. And right after that, I had a conscious conversation with a team member that had some feedback for me. Now, this reminded me of how critical and important feedback is but also how difficult it could be to take the feedback and truly embrace and sit with the feedback without responding or getting defensive. In today's video, I wanna talk about what we can do to ensure that when we're receiving information or feedback from our leader or from our peers, that we can receive it in a well, that we can receive it in a way that allows us to process it, digest it, and show professionalism. Hi everyone, my name is Natalina Nasri, the CEO and the founder of Rise Up For You, and welcome to Rise Up For You TV. Now, you and I both know that receiving feedback is critical to our growth, both personally and professionally. In fact, 95% of leaders and professionals think that they're self-aware, and only 10% are, according to Harvard Business Review. What does that tell us? That tells us that our perception of ourselves isn't in fact very accurate. And we do need feedback and we do need counsel to help us see our blind spots and to grow and push our potential. So today I wanna break down three things that we can do to help us embrace feedback even when it feels really scary or even when that chatter in our mind tells us that we are not enough and that we suck at our job. Here's three things you can do to practice in the moment to embrace the feedback receive the feedback and actually grow with the feedback. Okay, let's jump in. Step number one, when receiving feedback, the first thing we want to do is be mindful of our nonverbal communication. Oftentimes we think that if we just sit there and listen, that that's good enough. But in fact, we also want to be mindful of what we're doing with our body what we're doing with our face. Are we looking up to the sky? Are we rolling our eyes? Are we frowning our eyebrows and making gestures that are coming across maybe disrespectful or confused? When we're receiving feedback, we wanna do our best to have neutral nonverbal communication. And we also wanna acknowledge the communication with maybe nodding our head, writing down notes, or showing that we are engaged. Even if you don't agree with the feedback, we wanna prevent ourselves from rolling our eyes, making a face such as, I don't understand, crossing our arms. All of these things are in fact communicating signals. And oftentimes those signals can be taken in the wrong way and potentially disrespectful way. So that is step number one. Be mindful of your nonverbal communication. I always think it's best just to put your hands on your lap or maybe say, can I take some notes and just give them eye contact and continue to nod as they're providing the feedback to you. Step number two, say thank you. Do your best not to counter back, not to be defensive, and not to say anything else other than thank you for the feedback. I like to provide a transition statement such as, I really appreciate this feedback, thank you so much. I'm gonna sit with this and I'm gonna see you know, how I can make a shift or how I can learn from it. So saying thank you just acknowledges that you heard the feedback, that you received the feedback, and you're gonna take time to sit with the feedback. Oftentimes, we get that knee-jerk reaction to say something back or to defend ourselves. But the best way to receive the feedback is just to be an active listener and say thank you for what they're saying to you. Because ultimately, they're giving you feedback because they want you to succeed and learn. And my favorite and probably the most important, step number three to receiving feedback is to ask clarifying questions before you leave the room. So if there's something about the feedback that you're not clear on, this is the perfect time to ask, do you mind providing a little bit more clarity about A, B, C, and D? Or earlier you mentioned one, two, three, can you explain that a little bit more? Or perhaps a statement such as, I really wanna work on this feedback, do you have one or two action steps that I can take so that I can improve with the feedback that has been given, okay? Whatever you do, you wanna do your best not to leave the room without asking for clarity. And if you need a little bit of time to process, 
then this is a great opportunity to say, I'd like to ask you some clarifying questions. Do you mind if I have a day or two to think about this feedback and then come back prepared with any questions that I have? So you can do one or the other. You can either ask those clarifying questions right in the moment, or you can ask to have another meeting in a day or two so that you can write down your questions and come back and have a productive meeting. I understand that receiving feedback can be difficult. In fact, I go through it on a yearly basis as well. In fact, every six months I get feedback from my team. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you hear things that you don't want to hear, but at the end of the day, your growth is more important and the best way to push your potential and be the leader, the executive, the entrepreneur, the professional, the person that you want to be is by receiving that feedback so that you can be your absolute best. Thanks again, everyone. My name is Natalina Nasruddin. Welcome to Rise Up For You TV. And if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button below and I'll see you on the next one.